Target. Torpedo. Force spread. Fire. All right, so we've got some fish in the water. Should be going directly at this enemy heavy cruiser. I can't imagine at this range those guys would miss. Boom! 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 Four torpedoes into the side of that heavy cruiser. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and what you just saw there was uh, probably the highlight from my stream on Twitch last night, where I took a first look at a brand new game which came out yesterday and kind of caught a lot of us by surprise. Uh, the game is War on the Sea, as you can see in front of you. It is the newest game out by Killerfish Games, the developers of Atlantic Fleet and Cold Waters. That being said, this is a very different Killerfish studio than existed on Cold Waters. My understanding is, at the time Cold Waters came out, there were three or four individuals involved in that development. Uh, one sort of lead programmer, and then three other individuals who focused kind of on, like, the art or the GUI or the design. And those other three individuals left to form their own studio, and the at Jurassic Games, the folks working on sea power in the missile era um, and the programmer sort of I believe the owner of, or at least one of the owners of Killerfish um, is stayed on Killerfish and is making War on the Sea which you see in front of you here today the game came out yesterday and really caught a lot of us by surprise as I already said there was no PR there was no you know reach out to YouTubers there was nothing they just said on the developer page for their Steam uh, store a couple of days ago that it was going to be coming out in February and then like at 3 p.m. in the afternoon on a weekday it came out and uh, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at here today. Now I did live stream for about three hours last night but it was... <sighs> I wasn't thrilled with the live stream. I was very much learning how to play and uh, this game has a lot of UI um, challenges will I say so it wasn't super intuitive to try and play. So what we're going to do today is there's sort of two big parts to this game. There's the ability to fight naval or um, air versus naval battles. Uh, and then there's uh, a campaign. And so there, the, the campaign includes a lot of little naval battles or big naval battles as units come together and fight each other. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this first look into two parts. The first video, which is coming out today, we're going to focus on looking at a battle. Uh, and showing you sort of what the naval combat looks like. Tomorrow's video will take a look at the campaign and then also some of the air combat elements around the campaign. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. So there are, there are training scenarios or tutorials. They do a decent job at telling you how to use some features, but not a real great job of telling you, uh, you know, some of the intricacies of the game. Um, there's single player battles or single battles where you can fight sort of predetermined historical battles and then there's a custom battle option which allows you to kind of create your own fight uh, and then there's the campaign game that we talked about that stitches it all together in kind of a dynamic campaign in the South Pacific uh, during the Battle of Guadalcanal. Let's go ahead and jump into the single player battle. So as you can see here there are 24 battles that you can choose from in the single battle. Um, there are, actually there's 25, because if you go up here on the top, you can see this says Pacific. All of these battles are taking place, as I said, in the Pacific, mostly focusing in and around the Solomon Sea um, from, you know, 42 to 43. Um, you do have the Battle of Midway to an extent. Um, they're basically a couple of separate engagements within the Battle of Midway. And then you also have uh, Coral Sea, but most of it's really focused in and around the uh, Guadalcanal campaign. You also have an Atlantic tab, which has nothing in it, but that kind of tells us that the developers may be looking at expanding this back into the Atlantic and maybe making a much bigger game or at least having other campaigns or other elements of the game, potentially as DLC. You also have an Indian Ocean option where you can fight the Battle of Ceylon or Sri Lanka. I don't know how to pronounce this word. I always get it wrong. Even when people tell me how to do it, I always screw it up. Uh, but basically, this is just a, a Japanese carrier task force is sorting into the Indian Ocean, launches an attack on the British naval base at Colombo. Uh, two Royal Navy heavy cruisers come under attack from dive bombers launched from the carrier Akagi. 
And then you have a Mediterranean tab, which indicates that they may move it into the Mediterranean, where you could see British and Italian forces at some point. So there's definitely a lot of potential and room for this game to grow. Um, and so that's all really, really interesting. Okay, so what do we want to play here today? Most of these battles are going to be too long to show the entire battle, so I'll probably just show some snippets uh, and sort of explain some of the user interface, share my impressions, and get into a battle, but we probably won't finish the battle. So let's go ahead and let's jump into... Let's see, a lot of the Guadalcanal battles are at night. Um, you know what? Let's... We'll do an air battle and a naval battle because I think we've got, I'll have time to do that. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, the Coral Sea Day 2 scenario, which is an air attack by aircraft from the USS Yorktown and Lexington uh, against Japanese carriers. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and jump in. We'll play as the Americans. You all, if you want to switch sides, you can just click on this flag here and it changes the side you're going to play. But we're going to play as the Americans. Okay, so you can see here on the screen, we've got four formations, three of Dauntlesses, uh, and um, actually, no, we've sorry, that's four Dauntlesses. We have four formations here, two Devastator formations and two Dauntless dive bomber formations. Now, the game has, I believe, a maximum of 24 aircraft per side in the game, so it's not going to scale up to like, you know, 70 plus aircraft swooping down, but it's got, you know, 24 aircraft can, can give you a nice visual here and it's just kind of giving you a, an intro or a initial look at the the battlefield you can see we've got torpedo bombers to the north dive bombers to the south so go ahead and hit start um can i pause this so we're gonna pause this real quick so you can see once we hit start uh, our objectives are obviously to sink the enemy carriers we can see here we've got these aircraft already in formation we've got four dauntlesses here so if i actually go here um, i can select all four of these aircraft so Dauntless is one through four or I can select individually on the aircraft to sort of snap over to that aircraft so you can see this group is in formation you've got four Dauntlesses the game's paused that's why nobody's moving you can see they each have a thousand pounder underneath the bellies and I think they have two like hundred pounders or something like that you can see you've got the nice you know image here of the the rear gunner um, and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna zoom out here I, I don't see the enemy um, fleet yet so let's go ahead and actually I'm gonna um, so let's go ahead and um, sorry about it. it looked like it was windowed for whatever reason but um, let's go ahead and unpause for a second so all right so we've got the enemy task force in sight and this is how a lot of these battles start there's not a lot of maneuvering or anything like that for position. So one thing to keep in mind is like the stock battles, you're gonna kind of start right on top of each other, but when you fight in a campaign, there's a lot more like operational movement of task forces around different islands, and then when you get real close, then you actually fight. Um, but in the, the sort of pre-built battles, obviously we're kind of right on top of the enemy already. There's no scouting or, you know, finding the enemy. All right, so we can see here there's an enemy number three. What does that mean? If we s click on it, we can see there is, uh, looks like an enemy destroyer, I'm gonna guess. Um, and then there's also other enemy ships around here. So there's two enemy destroyers, which look like they're trailing a flat top. So I think this is the Shoikaku. Um, I don't know if we need to identify, there's a recognition manual, manual part of this. So we can classify targets. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, look for the enemy, well, we don't wanna use aircraft. So, by the way, when you classify targets in, in a surface engagement, my understanding is it actually does increase the uh, fire con the control or the, the likelihood of hitting the target or other things like that. I don't know if it matters for aircraft or not. Um, but we can scroll through the list here of, uh, of Japanese vessels. It's not the Yamato, which is in the game. I'm guessing it's the Shoikaku. If we look at the recognition manual, it looks like it. It's either that or the... Um, or the Suikaku. I'm not sure. I think it wasn't the show. It was it's one or the other. No target selected. It is selected. Do I have to? So, oh, this is what I have to do. I think.
you have to hit the T button to select the target. Then you go into the recognition manual. Classified as Shoikaku class carrier. So I don't know, again, if, if fire control matters at all for dive bombers. It does for surface vessels. All right, so let's do this. We've got these aircraft. We're paused right now. We're going to go ahead and select aircraft one through four. We're going to go to the orders tab. All of these guys, if I issue an order right now, they'll do their own thing individually. So you can group aircraft together. So I'm going to go ahead and have these guys form up. So Dauntless is one through four will form up. So that's, this is, you know, the four aircraft already in formation. If we go to this task force or this formation, you can see this is Dauntless eight. I think this is, well, I guess these guys are already in formation with Dauntless five. So if we were to go ahead and uh, choose Dauntless 5, 6, 7, 8, we would go ahead and hit T to tell them to target Shoikaku. We'll go ahead and do that, or Shokaku, and then we'll go ahead and order them to attack. So Dauntless's 5, 6, 7, 8 are going to attack Shokaku. We'll go back. I actually didn't order the Dauntless 1 to do that, did I? I did not order them to attack. So these guys we already ordered to form up. But then we'll also go ahead and hit T, select the aircraft carrier we want them to target. We know it's selected as a target when you can see this in red down here. This tells you what they're targeting. And then we can go ahead and tell them to attack. We also have these Devastator torpedo bombers, some to the north, some to the west. So these guys, it looks like the rest of these aircraft are, are, are already in formation with Devastator 13. So again, I'm gonna select each individual aircraft individually to make sure that they form up properly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and choose the Shokaku as the target. We'll go ahead and attack there. And then I'm gonna order Devastators 12, 13, 12, or I'm sorry, nine. Let's go here. 10, 11, 12 to form up and then attack, uh, that's two, no I don't want to, by the way I clicked the wrong thing here, you can see that it's not the lead ship that's highlighted, so this pink is the ship behind it, it's telling us it's ship number two, which we haven't identified yet, which is one of those destroyers, so I'm actually going to go ahead and hit T again and see if I can't click the proper target so it says the right ship here, and then go ahead and hit attack, and so that will allow my aircraft to kind of do their own thing. Now, the one thing is I believe there's some Japanese aircraft around here, so let's go ahead and unpause the game and see how this all unfolds. So you can see our aircraft are banking in for the attack. Yep, Japanese aircraft. Somewhere around here. Well, there's flak. But there are Japanese fighters here. You can see these zeros are coming in on our dive bombers, which are trying to close in on the aircraft. You can see, you know, flak is all around here. Another enemy zero is swooping in on the formation as they attempt to close in on the, uh, on the carrier. I think one of the things that's done really well in this game is the visuals, for sure. So you can see they're straight. This guy just shot down one Dauntless. He's swinging through the formation. He's kind of weaving back and forth. He's He got two more right there before he banked out of the way. So that just, like, obliterated one of my entire formations. I think they got the last one, too, yeah. So that entire Dauntless formation just got blasted out of the sky by those zeros. You can see them crashing into the sea. We've got another formation of Dauntlesses coming in here. We'll see if they get picked off. We don't have any Wildcats in this particular fight, so no escorts to kind of save our save our bacon. I didn't see where the other Zeros went. I don't know if they're drawn out of the way, or I, I don't have a visual on them. You can see the Devastators on this mini-map on the bottom are starting to come down. But we might be able to get this formation in here. You can see the light anti-aircraft, these tracers coming up. I love the flak bursts. The flak bursts are so well done, in my opinion. They just look gorgeous. All right, one of our Devastators is, or one of our Dauntlesses is smoking. Or it was trailing smoke. Yeah, it looks like one of the, on the outside wing here. So these guys are lining up to kind of go end on, which is presumably the right tactic with, with dive bombers. You can see they're diving down through this enemy flak. 
stacked up in a vertical formation. Bombs dropping. Nice! At least two hits. It looks like direct hit, direct hit, direct hit, direct hit. There was one dud bomb. And then another direct hit. So quite a few direct hits. The enemy carrier is ablaze. You can see it looks like they're shooting at our Devastators now. Or actually, those are the Dauntlesses peeling away. We lost another Dauntless to Flak after the fact. You can see there's... The, the uh, Devastators are coming in low now. So they're, they're coming in for their torpedo runs. There go the torpedoes dropping down. We got the splashes in the water. We'll click on the carrier here. As you can see, these guys passing low overhead. One of them is going down. Two more are smoking. God, I just love it. Love the way this looks. A third one's going down. Meanwhile, those torpedoes are coming in. Why does it keep pulling me away? I want to look at the carrier. Those torpedoes are... Bam! One, two. Should be two more, right? Oh, there they go. <laughs> Four torpedoes. Jesus. I mean, we lost a lot of our aircraft, but this thing is... All right, it's sunk. You can see the icon on the screen changed. So I'm going to have to change my... My devastators that haven't launched their torpedoes yet. So we'll have them go on this lead destroyer, I guess. So all I had to do was hit the T button. You can see the crosshairs on this icon is what you need to indicate you're in targeting mode. Click the ship you're targeting, and then you go ahead and choose the attack, the combat option, the attack option, and then the aircraft, because they're already formed up in a formation and grouped together, they'll bank off on their own. So you can see these guys are coming in. Presumably those torpedo. It looks like, did they drop the torpedoes? I didn't see that. They must have. All right, so the the destroyer looks like it might already be taking evasive action. Yeah, there's there's the torpedoes coming in. We'll see if we can get a good look at the Shokaku as she goes down. But you can see these torpedoes are coming in on this destroyer. I think she's going to get whomped too. One on the front there on the bow of the ship. There was a dud in here as well, but it was struck by two torpedoes. So I would think that would be enough to finish her off. But that's all my aircraft. Everybody who's, you know... Everybody who had a weapon has dropped it. We lost pretty heavy losses between the enemy fighters, which I don't know where they went, and the enemy flak. You can see here we lost four Devastators, five Devastators, and five Dauntlesses. Only three Dauntlesses and three Devastators made it out. Looks like she's she's going under. So one of the enemy destroyers will make it out. Because this, this is just sort of a set-piece battle where the aircraft are on the map already and there's no carrier for me to fall back to and reload, that's going to be it. Also, even in the campaign, like you don't really have the option of fighting a battle and then reloading your aircraft and fighting another battle. Like They would technically be... Set, the aircraft will return to the carrier... But then you've got to spend time reloading them with, with ordnance and then launching them again. And so it will take time, even in a campaign game, to launch multiple airstrikes against the enemy units. Units do take persistent damage across battles in the campaign, however. So you can, you can definitely hit them with multiple strikes. It just would result in sort of multiple tactical battles such as this. So you can see these guys, you know, this carrier is, is obviously going down. It's already been identified that it's going to sink. And uh, you can see her slowly... Slipping beneath the waves. There's, um, when you have ships, there actually is an option to view, like, a below water camera, and you can watch them go down. But I don't know if that's not an option, because I, I just have aircraft and no ships. But you can see her going under there. I can't believe that destroyer still hasn't sunk. It looks like she might survive. But... Really well done visuals on this. You could tell kind of from the air combat that the UI is a bit clunky. Um, it's way more apparent in the surface combat. It is very clunky in surface combat. The air combat is a little bit more manageable. It does a little bit more on the way of doing things on its own. Uh, this ship is flooding. It is taking damage um, that is outside of like 
ships take a while to sink sometimes, and, and it takes a while for you to identify if they're going to sink sometimes. So I'm just waiting to see if, if we're going to get her to go under. There is a time compression option, so we'll go ahead and speed that up. See if she goes under. She's very low in the water, that's for sure. The water is lapping at the, at the flank of the ship. But she might stay afloat, I guess. She, they might have, might have, sto you know, staved off the uh, the sinking wall. Looks like the fire might be spreading a little bit. So we are at times five time compression right now. And and there is damage that gets done inside the ship. So I, I guess I would have expected it to sink. But she's still alive. So I guess we'll just exit out of here. So go ahead and quit, or I guess retreat, confirm, and you can see here the destroyer will get scuttled for 1,700 tons, and the carrier was sunk for 25,000 tons. We lost 10 of our 16 aircraft. The enemy lost one aircraft, apparently, to a rear uh, rear gunner or something, and, uh, and those two ships for 27,000 tons total. The one enemy destroyer did make it out of there. So successful air battle there, um, which is one of those single-player battles. I'm going to go ahead and take a real quick look at the start of one of the naval battles as well. Um, so you can kind of see what that looks like. So I guess we'll jump right into Savo Island, which is kind of what you saw at the start of the video with those torpedoes. So you can see here, this is, you know, historically this was one of the worst defeats in American naval history. Um, the Japanese sent a force of heavy cruisers down after the Americans landed on Guadalcanal. And they engaged a strung out and sort of... Um, disorganized and, and poorly communicate, you know, a force that was not communicating effectively of American heavy cruisers and did absolute mayhem on them between the long lance torpedoes that you got to look at in the first few seconds of this video and uh, some pretty effective nighttime gunfire. The American night fighting was very poor. Their radar was not very, they didn't really know how to use it yet. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump into to Savo Island. All right, so you can see here we have a formation of seven ships in this case, the Chokai, the Ooba, the Kakao, the Kingsu, Kingusa, the Furitaka, the Tenryu, and the Yungai. And I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing all of those. Um, these are mostly heavy cruisers, but not exclusively. There's at least one light cruiser and I think maybe one destroyer in there. Um, you can see here, this is Guadalcanal down here in the southern part. Um, you can see the objective in response to the U.S. landing in Guadalcanal. A Japanese heavy cruiser force is sent to attack the transports. I don't know if the transports exist in this battle, but the American heavy cruisers definitely do. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to go ahead and pause right away. So an enemy contact. We detected four enemy ships, all directly sort of in front of us. So you can see it is nighttime, so it is dark. You can see this is the lead ship in the, con in the task force, the Chokai. We've also got the Aoba. Uh, we've got, which is another heavy cruiser, the Kakao, which is another heavy cruiser. You, by the way, if you want to click on a unit, you just click on this little plus sign, and it'll bring you right to the unit. The King Suga, which looks like a heavy cruiser. The Furitaka, which is a heavy cruiser. I know that one because of World of Warships. The Tenryu, which is a light cruiser. And uh, the Yungai, which is, I think, a destroyer. She might actually be a light cruiser. Can't really tell. If we go into orders... We go into main guns. Looks like she has. This has got it. That's definitely. I think it's a destroyer. She's got depth charges, so I would assume it's a destroyer. Anyway, um, let's go back to the Chokai just to kind of take a quick look at the Japanese lead ship in this task force. You can see we've got three turrets in the front, with each in age, eight in, each with dual eight-inch guns and two in the back. So we've got ten eight-inch guns on the ship. We have multiple different tabs here on the screen. So obviously our formation is on the left side here. Our newsreel or our sort of updates of items are down here on the lower left. If you take a look here, we've got a recognition manual to recognize enemy ships. That helps with fire controls. We've got orders here. So we can actually order our ships to form up. So I'm going to go ahead and order all of my ships here, just like with the air units, to go ahead and form up. So all of these ships will form up on the Chokai. I, I'm, that should make maneuvering a little bit easier. Um, and then, as you can see here, we've got 
a damage control section, which this is very similar to like those old SSI great naval battles looks. Because like on the damage control, you can see you've got engineering. This is sort of below decks. So you've got magazines, engineering, uh, which has to do with like, you know, obviously your ability to sort of the machinery or whatever to move the ship forward. You've got your rudder, your propellers. Um, you've got magazines that can, I assume, explode and be detonated. On the top, you've got your turrets, which can each individually be knocked out, your bridge, torpedo mounts, all of these things, uh, which can be damaged, and as they take damage, it can knock them out. We've got four wrench icons, which indicates we have four, uh, each, uh, four hexes that can be repaired simultaneously in combat. Um, right now, we've got the damage control set to automatic, so that should uh, make damage control a little bit easier. You also have the option to counter flood compartments when you take flotation damage, so that's something else to keep in mind. Outside of the damage control, you have a main guns section here where you can tell your guns to fire with AP, HE, or star shells. You can see here when we hover over this, the Ford magazine has 480 rounds for each of these three turrets of AP, 180 of HE, and 96 star shells. The rear magazine has 320, 120, and 64. We have secondary batteries on each flank uh, with 880 HE rounds in, that, in those two secondary batteries. We have torpedoes in four mounts, four triple mounts, uh, in near amidships, and then even these ships have some depth charges, apparently. Um, submarines are modeled in the game, but I don't think there are any in this fight. So, we have selected our formation. We have um, all of our ships selected. And so I'm going to try something here, because in my experience, I could not very effectively target enemy shipping. So I'm going to go ahead, and there's other options down here, by the way. There's like a binoculars option where you can kind of view things through what what appears to be like a binocular. I don't know if I can't move things around. Do I have to be unpaused to do that? Yeah, right click. So if I right click and drag. So I believe these are the enemy ships. Right? Oh god, you could just see the flashes. The enemy's firing at us already. So let's go ahead and click on these enemy ships. Let's click out of here. This looks like well, let's do this. Let's identify this target, right? So the Chokai, we're going to go ahead and select. Actually, let's do this. Orders. Can I attack? So I'll click T on the four. You can see solution two. I'm going to go ahead and use the identification manual. Because this has triple turreted. Um, this is definitely a treaty cruiser for the Americans. Uh, what would it be? It's not a Brooklyn. It's not an Atlant Atlanta. It's not a Cleveland. Is it a Pensacola class? So it's got, well, it's got two bridges. Well, this one's a shorter bridge in the back. It's got the two funnels at amidships. It's got the two triple turrets in front. The one in the back, it looks like. Actually, triple double. So no, that's not it because this has three turrets. So I don't think it's a Pensacola. What could it be? Could it be the Northampton? Northampton does look a lot like this. You can see here it has triples in front, two triples in front, one triple in back. It seems like it's a good fit. The Portland also has triples in front. She looks a little bit bigger. There's the two catapult launchers here, a midship. How is the Portland different than the Northampton? They look almost identical. How the hell would I identify the difference? Uh... I don't think they're Portland's. I think they're Northampton's, based on what I know about that. I mean, there's probably secondaries that I could look at. These mounts look exactly matching. Is the is the Pensacola the same? Or the, oh, oh this is the Portland. Yeah, I think these secondaries, these mounts look a little bit different. So we're gonna go with the, the Northampton. Go ahead and classify as target. If we go, I'm curious if I do order, if I choose to attack. 
So it does let you do that. Okay, I was having the darndest time telling my ships to attack, but it does look like if I if I issue the order in that way, they will attack. So let's see if they start firing on their own or if I have to manually control their guns. The guns are turning. All of them are firing in unison. Hell yeah! Alright, so we're going to engage that rear enemy target. We probably... Oh god, we just took some shots amidship there. That was some pretty accurate fire. I love this formation. <laughs> formation of mine here. We probably need some star shells, actually. Is there any option to do to do that? I mean, I guess I could tell the secondary guns to fire star shells. Because you do want you do want star shells at night. It will improve your solution because you'll have better visuals on the enemy. All right, let's take a look at the enemy ship. You can see she's taken quite a few hits. The enemy has fired some star shells. You can see just beyond the rear of our, our line here. But you can just see, I love the, the, the images on the horizon of, of all of those guns firing. I'm waiting to see like a bunch more. They're, they're shooting kind of short. There's some going long, but you can see we're just riddling the sea around this enemy cruiser with gunfire. Now, we also can't get our entire formation's guns into action quite yet. Um, so are we are any of our ships burning the destroyer at the end of this line looks like she's taken some damage let's go ahead and look at the damage control yeah so she's got one of her propellers is currently has a fire going on so you can see they're counting down from 78 now to repair the propeller they're also doing some repair work just beyond the propeller room here and so they're using two of the three damage control compartments there my lead ship has suffered a little bit of flooding as well. So it looks like in the engineering compartment and a general compartment, they suffered some flooding. And so they're, they're working on that. So you can see there's a whole bunch of star shells over the, the enemy ships now, by the looks of it. So I don't, it doesn't look like all of my guns can come to bear. Because those rear guns, I don't have a I don't have a good line here. So let's go ahead and select all of these ships as we had done before. I don't know if I have to hit form up or not. What ship are we looking at? Are we look we are looking at the Chokai. They're in a line ahead formation. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give them a new course. Well actually I'll manually use the WASD keys to turn them to the left a little bit. So we can get our rear batteries in, in line here, because we're we're fighting at a disadvantage for no real reason. So we'll get those rear guns into action. Here in a second. Also, turning does make the enemy fire and solution less accurate. You can see down here, this represents the status of our rudder. So right now it's a midships with those two things, but if I tap it multiple times, I can I can turn, you know, more more steadily, I guess. Oh, everybody's firing. Is everybody firing? Star shells? They're not actually shooting to kill? So how about you stop doing that? How about you guys actually, like, shoot the enemy? Because there's a whole bunch of star shells around here, but I... That's, that was a little bit weird. But no, it looks like they are shooting to kill. At least some of them are. Maybe that was just my lead ship. They should all be following him, though. Doesn't really look like... Oh, they are. Looks like they're turning in line. So we've got a 50% solution here, or 38% for him. The lead ship has a 50% solution. The enemy's at about 7,000 yards. Firing torpedoes, by the way, is really satisfying just to watch. Let's do this. Let's give a nice, a nice spread here. 10 degree spread. We'll fire max here at 4. 7,000 yards I think is doable. So we'll go ahead and uh, fire these off and I'll show you guys the torpedoes coming off the side. So you can see the, the mounts just swiveled. 
And then you're going to get the individual torpedoes coming off and splashing into the water. It is just gorgeous watching that. I'm hoping a 10 degree spread gives us a chance of hits on the other ships. By the way, there is a way closer enemy ship. It looks like it's a destroyer closing in here. One of our, is that one of our ships? No, it's, a, it's the Northampton. Or the American, whatever it is. That's currently burning. And so you can see all these star shells. Nice, nice hit there by one of our main shells. We're plastering this guy now. I think my ships aren't taking too much damage either. I don't see any smoke. Just the formations, just the, the visuals on this are gorgeous. Just looking at everybody firing in unison. You've got the smoke coming off of it. There, and and I'll, I'll be totally transparent, guys, because this is obviously coming off as a very positive opinion. This game takes a little bit of getting used to. The UI is clunky, um, but, you know, having to manually click these individual ships to, like, form them up, and if you forget to, it can be, like, three steps to, like, hit T to target a ship, and then go into the settings and choose fire, but make sure your main director is firing at the right target, and when you want to pivot targets, you've got to stop the main director firing at this target, and then manually choose another target. Like, the UI is clunky, but it... You know, I, I think as I get more used to this game, this is going to be one of those games that I'm just going to absolutely love. There's just there's a lot of micromanagement in the game, and um, and in, in surface battles, that doesn't always feel like it makes a lot of sense. But that's that's sort of my buyer beware sort of caveat. But you can see this just looks looks awesome here, and it, you know we could I don't know if we can do time compression here when you're in, in close action. It doesn't look like you can. But the American heavy cruiser here is taking a lot of damage. If we take a look at the other ships here, looks like this is a... I think this is one of the Australian County class cruisers, or it's it's a it's a treaty cruiser. It's I think it's four eight inch or eight four inch. Oh my god, eight eight inch guns. I think. And we've got a destroyer here and another destroyer here. So this is I think the western formation. There's another formation of like three or four heavy cruisers to the east. We're not firing very accurately there though. Oh, you can see the destroyer at the end of our line just took a big hit. You saw that flash is uh Anyway. So we're just continuing to pound away at that American heavy cruiser there at the rear of the line. I guess it's actually the furthest from us now, by the way. do this let's have one of our other ships in line here i don't think any of the other ones fired their torpedoes no i don't want you to do that stop that all right we're gonna get a, a four spread five thousand yards is definitely well within the range of the Longlands. We're going to get a nice spread of four torpedoes here. And we'll see them go off the rear of that ship. I'm just going to go down the line and individually tell these ships to fire their torpedoes. So these are bad fire controls. You know, you can see the percentage of the fire, con you know, the, the solution. Probably gonna take a while for those torpedoes to get in close. So we're, we've shifted some of our fire. This American heavy cruiser is low in the water. And so you can see also it looks like this destroyer is taking some damage as well. I really wish there was a time compression option when you're in battle like this, but 
You can time compress with aircraft when they're kind of flying away, but you can't time compress ships by the looks of it in this kind of a scenario. You can see the rear ship in our line here is taking quite a bit of damage. If we go to the damage control section, we can see that she has moderate damage, minor flooding, but she's on fire. I'm not sure if any of the other ships are really taking a lot of damage. None, 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 none. Heavy. So actually, the Chokai at the head of our column has taken the, the bulk of the enemy, enemy fire here, it looks like. Oh, one of the enemy ships was struck by a torpedo, apparently. Must have been that first salvo. It says over here that it was struck by a torpedo. I didn't see the torpedo hit it, but... Not sure who it hit. By the way, my star shells are long gone, so we probably should be firing more. This guy's low in the water. It's almost it's almost a goner. So I don't really have a good visual on, on the torpedoes here. This is surface engagements. This is what it's like. Obviously, there we showed you the air combat earlier in the video. Um, you know, this battle has a whole other segment to it that would come up as well. The, the purpose of this video isn't really to show you all the ins and outs or show this full battle. So I think I'm going to drop out of here. And then I'm actually going to show you some when, when a well-executed torpedo strike, how it can wreak havoc on an enemy formation in when I was playing this live on the stream here. So let's cut away here real quick, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Hey, we got, we got some hits. Looked like, I, looked like a torpedo met up with this destroyer. Hopefully that finishes it off. Meanwhile, we can... There's a nice torpedo hit on that cruiser. Another one right there. She might be a goner. Two torpedoes to the front of the ship. These spreads right into this enemy formation have been devastating. We're we gonna hit this guy. <laughs> Look at all those torpedoes crisscrossing. I just heard another one hit something. Oh no, those are gunfire. That's gunfire. All right, everybody. I think that's going to do it for this video. We've been going for about 40 minutes. The real, the purpose of this video is I really wanted to show you sort of a first look and share some of my first impressions about this game's combat. I'm going to do another video tomorrow that dives more into the campaign. But what I, I just want to get a couple of things out of the way. This is well, the footage you're seeing now was part of my first look stream, but the, the the last 40 minutes or so have really been me playing the game after having played it for three and a half hours already today. So while this is a first look, I wouldn't say this was my first experience. I had a much rougher time than you saw here learning how to do anything. The game has a tutorial, and I highly recommend you check it out because if you don't go through the tutorials, it's not very clear how you do a lot of things. Like... The combat feels a lot more micromanagey than maybe it than maybe it is after you go through the tutorial. The group management of ships was was kind of hard to pick up uh, without going through the tutorial. So I definitely recommend you check the tutorial out if you're playing this because it's just it, at least for me. I mean, everybody has a different experience, I think, with games. But for me, the UI wasn't super intuitive. I really do feel the UI could use some work to kind of make things a little bit more clear without, you know, having to go through all the tutorials. But um, if you are going to play this, definitely check the tutorials. Outside of that, outside of some, some real learning pains, um, but the visuals of this game are gorgeous. The, you know, the some of the way that things like, you know, the flak or the gunfire, the star shells, the torpedoes, all of that is top notch, but that being said, uh, I think this is something that I could definitely show a lot on the channel potentially moving forward. Let me know if this is something you guys want to see more of. Like I said, tomorrow we'll have a video that dives into the campaign gameplay a bit. Um, but until then, uh, this is War on the Sea, uh, new game out by Killerfish Studios, and uh, let me know your thoughts in the chat below. Until next time, though, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Hope you liked the first look at both sort of the air attacks on ships and then the, the naval combat as well. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.